they start speaking in the language. But the scripture says here that the, those people that speak that language, they're speaking to God. I'm not supposed to understand what you're saying. Why are you trying to speak that to me? Amen. Unless you have been told, chapter 14, 1 Corinthians, unless you've been told that I have the ability to the Spirit to interpret what you're saying. Amen. You don't believe it? Let's go on. Look at verse 3. But the perfect, no, yeah, but the uh, verse 3, chapter 14, but he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh, verse 4, in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesies edifies the church. Paul is making this distinction. Uh, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, you're only benefiting yourself because you're in the spirit. You're only being blessed for yourself. But he that prophesies, speaking in a language and speaking the words uh, that the Holy Spirit give you to tell, uh, to speak, then those that hear you, they can understand you, and everybody can benefit from what you're saying. So that's why Paul said in verse 1, I'd rather that you had the gift of prophecy, because everybody can be blessed through the gift of prophecy. If you have the gift of tongues, you're the only one that's being blessed. Unless somebody comes along, I got to get there, I think it's verse 5, I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you speak, that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Verse 4 and 5 in the Holy Christian Standard. The person who speaks in another language builds himself up, but he who prophesies builds up the church. I wish all of you spoke in other languages, but even more that you prophesy. The person who prophesies is greater than the person who speaks in languages unless he interprets so that the whole church may be built up. Amen. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. So if the person who's speaking in tongue, if the Holy Spirit is involved with them to give them this language of tongue and they speak to God. Right. Or if would the spirit come when there's no interpreter here for, for if, if they're speaking, you see what I'm saying? If yes, ma'am. But edifying, and for the most part, the Holy the Holy Spirit would know who's there to interpret if it's for the benefit of the church. Mm -hmm. So if nobody's here for the interpreter, so then how does it benefit? How, right. How does it benefit the church? Excellent question. You you heard it right. If, if the Holy Spirit is the one that gives the gift of speaking in tongues, that He understands that there's nobody around to, to interpret what is being said, why would he do it in the first place? You raise an excellent question because nowadays there's great debate as to whether or not the gift of tongues is actually a gift that the Spirit is still doing today. Because uh, in, in Peter's day, in the days that Paul and, and Peter and the apostles were being, were, were being used to grow the church, the, the gift of tongues was definitely a sign for those who were listening that the Holy Spirit was indeed endorsing and uh, a part of uh, or the, the, the source for what they were doing. It was, all, it was like an endorsement, some folks say. You know, it must be the Holy Spirit because they're speaking in tongues. And it helped to edify and build up the faith of the earlier Christians. So some argue that that is not necessary anymore, so there's no real need for the gift of tongues anymore. That, that's a debate. I'm not saying that's true. I'm saying that's a debate. The Holy Spirit, I believe, is intelligent. And so, I, and I still believe that if he chooses to, he can still use people to speak in tongues. But, uh, what I should say, but, we should keep in mind, though, what Paul is saying. When he does that, who's being helped? Just that person. Unless there's someone to interpret. Now, you never know, and let me throw this out, because I don't want anybody to say that then if that's the case, should nobody be speaking the tongue. You don't know how the spirit is dealing with individuals. And you don't know how he is working through the lives 
of individuals. And who knows? Sometimes it is necessary, even today. Because I would never say that that's a gift that's no longer needed because you don't know how the spirit will work with somebody in the environment and the congregation or the group of people that they're in. We, we don't know the mind of the Holy Spirit. And so we cannot always, if at all, question what the Holy Spirit does. But Paul makes this point that for those of us who are hearing it, you know, we're not necessarily being benefited by unless we just believe that's the Holy Ghost. And, and so we're just, you know, in our faith, just taking it that that's the Holy Ghost and we are rejoicing with that person as they exercise their gift. But as far as directly benefiting from what they're saying, we don't know what they're saying. So we can't be benefited uh, unless there's somebody to interpret. For instance, uh, before we started our Bible class, some of you got up to testify. We were blessed by your testimony because we understood what you said. Suppose somebody is testifying in the spirit and the spirit uses them to speak in another language. Well, whatever they're saying is not going to bless us like it would bless us if we understood the word. I'm sorry, Sister Francis, I saw your hand. Uh, maybe, maybe this will help explain a little bit. Because most of the time when you hear people speaking in tongues, tongues like that, it's doing a praise and worship when they're just talking to God. And uh, like you said, the, uh, the tongues of edification it builds you up. A lot of times you need to be built up. If you're built up the way you're supposed to be, sure. then maybe you're a better witness or a better prophecy of what you are uh, the other work and the other gifts that God gave you to work. So, hey, I think it's beneficial because it's going to help me be, be stronger than, uh, I'm just talking about personally. Okay, all right. Stronger than uh, I need. I need it. Because sometimes you feel real weak. You know, you feel real weak. And Absolutely. It's going to help me to build me up where I need to be on a level where I can really do the work that God has me to do. But like I said, most of the time when you're speaking, people speaking in tongues, it's more of praise and worship when it's just all to God anyway. Yeah, I would say most of, I, I wouldn't even say most of the time, but yeah, that a great majority of the time, you're right, it does. But there are some times when it's not praise and worship. Amen. I've heard preachers preaching Amen. and during the time of their sermon, uh, they break out in tongues. It's like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be preaching. Don't nobody understand everything you're saying when you go in there. You know, and so let me be clear. I, I agree with you. And I did say for that person, because you never know how the Holy Spirit is working in that person. So I agree with you for that point. But my initial point was, if you're talking to me, and you're supposed to be blessing me, and throughout your conversation, you break out in tongues, unless you are interpreting what you are saying to me in your tongues, it's not helping me. And according to the scripture, those that were gifted with the tongues, they were not speaking to us anyway. They were speaking to God. Yes, ma'am. Now, what I thought when people do that and they're talking to me, I thought, you know, like it's, it, you know, it's just, it is a lady that go to church here and she'll be talking to me and she'll go into that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like something hits her, sure. whether it's good or bad. She's saying that for her own, except not to me. Okay. Uh, that, that's what I thought. That, you that's know what I'm fine. saying? She felt something. When she started to talk to me, she felt something inside. And it just, she caught, she, she said this. And I don't know if that's right, but that's what I thought. No, I thought that, that, that's what she to me. I wouldn't say that's not right. I mean, you, you're, you are receiving what she's saying. And you're also receiving the spirit that she's saying it in. And even though you don't understand it, that's fine because you you are uh, you're comfortable with, and you're still being blessed because of the connection of the Holy Spirit that's in both of you. I have no problem with that. I don't think she said it at all. I didn't say she was saying it to you. Oh, okay. But what I'm saying is, I don't. I'm thinking that I don't suppose to feel anything. That is for her own benefit that she stopped and said this. Okay, I got you. Okay. Now, let me say this thing, because I hear what you're saying, and you're absolutely right. Okay. So let me say it like this. I think that sometimes, some people, when they are talking directly to folk, in their conversation, when they're supposed to be conveying a message to me, or if I'm in a crowd, and they're supposed to be conveying a message to the crowd, when you begin in your message or during your speech or your dialogue or your soliloquy or even your sermon, when you begin to speak in tongues, I don't understand it. And if it's an unknown language, nobody else understands it. 
And so we cannot be really benefited directly from what you're saying. For instance, if I'm the doctor, thank you, Jesus. If I'm the doctor and you've come to get help and I've got the remedy and the medicine and I'm saying to you, now what you need to do is get you a glass of water, get a tablespoon of salt, get a, a half a, a stick of butter, and then some sugar. Wait a minute. I don't miss part of what you said. So I don't miss part of the remedy. Are you getting me? Amen. And so it doesn't benefit me. Because at some point, you started speaking in a language, and now I don't have all of what you said. So it doesn't benefit me directly. Now, they may be in the spirit, and uh, and they may, you know, uh, they, they may be saying, that, well, that's just the Holy Spirit getting to me and, and talking through me and what have you. I think that the Holy Spirit is intelligent enough to talk to us so that we get the entire message without missing it. Because someone individual began to celebrate and to praise God individually on their own and leave me out of what I needed to get. Amen. Does that make sense? I'm not saying everybody does. And because you're right, one of our members, she speaks in tongues and, and you know, she gets caught up in the spirit. And I don't have a problem with it because I'm connected like you. I feel that's the Holy Spirit working through her and using her. And I'm blessed because I see her praising God in the spirit in the way God uses her. Got no problem with that. I do have a problem with people who tell me that they're telling me something from God. And in the middle of you telling me something from God, you start speaking in tongues. Wait a minute. If God wants me to get the whole message, he's going to give it to you in a way that I understand all of what you're saying. Are you, does that make sense? Sister Johnson. I'm sorry. Uh, before you, Sister Robbie had her hand up and then you. I just have a question. When a person is speaking in tongues and they stop or whatever, can they actually interpret it? What they just said? Can they stop and say, you know what? God said this. According to the word of God, they possibly can. Okay. Because look at verse 5. I think that was verse 5 we read. Okay. Verse 5 says, I wish all of you spoke in other languages, but even more that you prophesied. The person who prophesies is greater than the person who speaks in languages unless he interprets so that the church may be built up. So, yeah, it's possible. Now, for us, it don't always happen. So that's where some confusion comes in. Are they really doing and, and uh, are they really doing? That's that's what. No, that's okay. That's okay. Let's throw that out there. This is Bible class, and, and that's where we have to be careful. And that's why I said you don't know how the Holy Spirit is working through an individual. You don't know what the Holy Spirit is doing all the time in an individual's life, in a person's life, because we don't know that. Now, if I don't understand what they're saying when I leave, I just don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> Sister John. My first question was similar to what Robbie was saying, because when they're speaking, I was just thinking, the words that they're saying, is that say perhaps, is, have you ever heard those words like in Greek or Latin or whatever, and sometimes if you notice, they may repeat repeating the same thing, right. so you say they don't know what they're saying, but sometimes, I'm not I'm just saying, sometimes it's like to rehearse because whatever you do it, you always say the same word. The words. same thing, you right. You say the same words, uh -huh. you do it. You know, <laughs> I'm just wondering, you know, how, right. you know, if there anybody know what these words mean, if there any, if it's something you made up, or if these words really mean something in another language, a common language, we just don't know Greek or Latin. So if we knew that, then we might know what you were saying, it may not be. And it's possible that they could be saying the same thing because in English, we say all the time, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So in another language, it would sound the same. So it, it, it is very possible. And the other thing, let's keep in mind, this person is speaking a language that they have not been taught and they don't know themselves. So, you know, it, it is possible. But, you know, on the other hand, from a very uh, a skeptical point of view, if you will, you do begin to wonder, now wait a minute. <laughs> like they say the same thing all the time but it could be, they may be saying bless the Lord you know, just like you know <laughs> when I was growing up and I had uh, mothers in the church, I told you about the one mother, her thing was holy holy, holy she said that all the time, when she got happy holy, 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 so if she's saying that in another talk, it's going to sound the same all the time, so you have to really be careful and this is where 
where the scripture connects with itself, or it should. The scripture says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, try the spirits by the spirit. If it's of God, the Holy Spirit in you is going to connect with the Holy Spirit in that other person. And going back to Sister Rose's point, even if I don't understand it, I feel the spirit within her. And so I'm good. Even though I'm not here or understanding what she's saying, I know that's the spirit of God working in her. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Watson. Even with, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Even if with your um, example of the doctor giving a remedy, mm -hmm. a lot of times doctors use terminology that we, as regular people who didn't go to medical school, don't understand. And some people won't ask, what do you mean? Can you explain that to me in a way that, that I will understand? But we trust them because they are, they're the doctor. Right. So if they're giving us a remedy and they say this is because you have a bilateral tear in your bicuspid or something like that, and you're like, what is that? All I know is I have a problem, and he's telling me that, that, that giving me the medicine to help me fix it, so I'm going to take it and go do what he told me to do. All right, and, and then using your example, which is a good example, uh, using your example, here's the difference. They'll speak to us, you're correct, in medical terms, or especially if you get the hold of the, the report and you see if you can, you know, I'm sorry, doctors, if you can understand what they've written, because a lot of times we say we don't understand what doctors write. But when you do read it and you say, what is this? You should be able to go back to the doctor and, the doc and ask the doctor, just like you said, what does this mean? And he should be able to translate for you in layman's term what he wrote. Those that are speaking in the spirit of, with other tongues, if you were to replay for them, what they said, if they're in, if they're speaking in the other tongues through the Holy Spirit, it's a language they don't know. So if I if I get happy and the Holy Spirit is really working to me, and all of a sudden to you all I start speaking in Russian, when you play it back to me, I'm gonna be like, I ain't say that. What does that mean? I won't even know it myself. Amen. Yes, ma'am. My point was though that you trust the doctor, and normally True. the person that's up before you speaking. If they get touched by the spirit or start speaking in tongues, even if we don't understand, it's a person that's before us, and we normally it's somebody that we trust. Absolutely, and you're absolutely right, and I agree with that. And, and again, it goes back to what Sister Rose was saying because uh, you 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 feel if you, even if you don't recognize it or realize it, you feel the discernment of the spirit, the spirit giving you the ability to distinguish what is genuine and what is not. Uh, again, connecting scriptures, scriptures related to one another. So you, uh, by the spirit, you have tried or tested the spirit to know that that spirit is the right spirit. Amen? Amen. And, and, you know, don't, don't, let this, don't let this bother you or, you know, make you all messed up or everything. I, I'm just quoting what the scripture says. And the scripture says, according to Paul, that those that speak in other tongues, uh, when they're doing it, they're really speaking to God. So Paul says again, and, and keep in mind, now keep in mind chapter uh, 12. Chapter 12 says that all of the gifts come from the Holy Spirit. So my uh, common denominator is if it comes from the Holy Spirit, it's got to be good. Amen. Now just because I don't understand your gift don't mean that something wrong with your gift or that there's something wrong with me. It is just how the Holy Spirit chooses to use us. Amen. Yes, ma'am. I have something else I was going to say. If you record that, because there have been times when, if I'm around somebody, they always, not this happening, drinking or using drugs or whatever it is, I have a habit. Mm -hmm. It on my nerves. Mm -hmm. I record. Mm -hmm. you know, just now, I was laughing, and I don't want you to think I was laughing. Oh, no, no problem. No but problem. anyway, and you play it back to them. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> they never. You can never make them believe yourself. But they understand what they're doing. They they did well. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, because even when you play it back, when they hear it, they hear their language, and they may not want to believe that's them. But when they hear it, they do understand what's going on and what that person is doing. Right. Now, and and, and of course, as you said, you know they've been drinking on drugs. And that's a different spirit. Right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And those are spirits. Right. Alcoholism and drug addiction right. and all that, those are spirits. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians 6 and 12. So you're absolutely right. But uh, with the Holy Spirit, see, that, that, you know, it's a different yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and, and so your point is well taken, though. You're absolutely right. And your, your point is very well taken. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, because if you play something like that back to another person, as she said, when they hear it, they'll understand themselves, you know, if they're honest. Did I say that? Oh, my God. Did I? You know, like right now, I don't know why people don't understand that in this technological age, if you feel anything, there is the strongest possibility that it's going to go viral. I hope this goes viral. Amen. Meaning that it's going to get popular and be seen by a lot of people. And then they look at the videos of themselves and go, oh, my God. Was that me? And, it's, and when they look at themselves, it's not that they're looking and they're not understanding what they've said or what they've done. For the most part, they just can't believe or they are embarrassed that they've been caught on video. My point here, according to scripture, those who are by the Holy Spirit speaking in another language is a language they have not studied or learned themselves. And so more than likely, if you played it back to them, they wouldn't understand them when they're not caught up in the spirit as they were when they were speaking in tongues. That's what I'm saying. And when they do it according to Paul, they're doing it to God and not to us. And so Paul says, unless there's somebody to interpret what they're saying, we're not necessarily going to be benefited by it. So he says, if anything, and I thank God for this other version, he said, I wish all of you spoke in tongues. But I rather more you had the gift of prophecy because everybody can be blessed through the gift of prophecy. Amen. Does that make sense? Because we shouldn't go around putting anybody down. That's right. And even when I made that statement about, you know, when you're talking to me and then you start speaking in tongues, and I don't understand what you're saying. I'm not putting down the gift. I'm putting down the use of the gift. Amen. You know, why are you going to put me on a, a, a bicycle to ride from uh, Evanston all the way to Gary, Indiana, when I can get on in a car <laughs> or a train or something like that. You know, that's not real good use of, of what we have to use. Am I making sense? Amen. Amen. Any other questions so far? So far, so good? Yes, ma'am. Uh, can, can I do a testimony? Sure. In regards to tongues. Uh, I do speak in edification tongues, and most of the time I pray in tongues. Because I can be at 2 o'clock in the morning, I cannot sleep. And I've learned that if I start speaking in tongues, then I'll be able to go. Because I don't know, maybe somebody in another country or something need that prayer. And I don't know what the prayer is <coughs> at this time. So by me praying in tongues, and that's just, you know, that's just, I feel better. When I pray, you know, like a lot of times I'm, I'm praying regularly. Then I start praying in tongues. And when I finish, I, it had brought me out a lot of situations. Amen. It had brought me a lot of situations. And, and that corresponds with what Paul was saying. It identifies you. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Praise God. Amen. Like I said, you know, if it's a gift from the Holy Spirit, it's got to be good. Amen. It's just that we have to use it in a proper way. Or a better, a better way of saying that, and in conjunction with what Sister William just said, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to use the gift in us in the way that He chooses us to do it. Because when we do it the right way, somebody's gonna be blessed. Amen. Uh, even if it's you. And so just like she said, and, and that corresponds with what Paul said, uh, that person is edified. The, the, the individual is edified. And God knows nothing wrong with that. All of us need something that we can do that's going to help us on a daily basis. Amen. Or encourage us on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, verse six. Now, brethren, King James Version, if I come unto you, and, and Paul is now just elaborating on all the stuff we were just talking about. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? Uh, home and Christian standard. But now, brothers, if I come to you speaking in other languages, how will I benefit you unless I speak to you with a revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? Verse 7. King James Version. And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet 
give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise, ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. Paul's elaboration. Even things that don't have life will make sound. Horns, saxophone, trumpet, clarinet. Amen. You know, unless there is some order in what you're playing, how will you know what's being played? And how will you understand it? In other words, it's like any one of us on a given Sunday morning who has had no musical training or background whatsoever, we get up there and just start punching keys. It's just going to be a whole lot of noise. As opposed to a musician who knows what he's doing, uh, Sister Watson's husband plays the bass. A very funky bass, I may add. <laughs> he plays the bass. Now, if I get his bass, I just start doing one of these numbers and, and putting my fingers everywhere without any order. I'm just making noise. But Brother Watson can take that same bass, and because he knows how to play, you can hear a song, and it makes sense to you. And on the bass, he can start playing Amazing Grace or something, and it benefits you. You understand what I'm saying? And so Paul says, it's kind of like that with tongues. If I don't understand, and it's just coming out noise, how are we being benefited? It's just like a harp, or uh, as he says here, a horn or a, a harp, without any distinction. And he used the example, you know, there was a battle cry, a distinctive call horn for battle. Dun, dun, dun. You ever watch those uh, Calvary movies, those uh, Western, dun, 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 what how the charge is? Uh, they knew that that particular sound means get ready for battle or charge. But if he just blew anything, poof, what does that mean? I don't know. What does that mean either? And before you figure it out, the enemy has swooped in and got rid of it. Hey, does that make sense? Hey, Amen. So he says in verse 9, uh, in the same way, unless you use your tongue for intelligible speech, how will what is spoken be known? For ye will be speaking into the air. Verse 10. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Uh, therefore, there are doubtless many different kinds of languages in the world, and all of them he says, have meaning. That's what that means. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Uh, Holy Christian standard. Therefore, if I don't know the meaning of the language, I will be a foreigner. Because in the King James Version, sometimes barbarian means foreigner. Uh, I will be a foreigner to the speaker and the speaker will be a foreigner to me. It's as easy as when y'all go on your cruises and what have you and you go to uh, Puerto Vallarta and all those other places in Mexico and you are, you don't know uh, Spanish when they start speaking you're just looking. <laughs> and it's not that what they're speaking is not a language it's just that you don't know the language. And when you start saying it I want a, uh, a Big Mac. Oh, well, they may know that because that's universal. You know, uh, do y'all sell chitlins? <laughs> they may start looking at you like, chitlins? No, don't speak that English. <laughs> because you are a foreigner. But Paul said that doesn't mean that the language is, you know, uh, uh, not legitimate. There are many languages in the world and all of them are, 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 have some meaning. But his point is that he's elaborating on that unless you understand it, it does not benefit you. Right. Amen. Uh, verse 13. Oh, no, verse 12. Um, Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. As much as you may desire certain types of gifts, Paul says, Desire the ones, ask God for the ones that's going to benefit the church more. Amen. You want a gift that can be used to be a blessing to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, the end of chapter 12, the beginning of chapter 14, desire the more excellent gifts. Those gifts 
that can be a blessing to your brothers and sisters in Christ. And I said to uh, uh, I said at the beginning of this, before some of you came in, uh, it's amazing that Paul had to uh, interject into this conversation the idea of love, because you would think that because we are all Christians, that's the common denominator that we will all have anyway. Uh, but that's, uh, unfortunately and, and uh, uh, obviously, uh, that's not that wasn't necessarily the case in Paul's day, and it's not necessarily the case in our churches today. Amen. People come together and uh, they go to church and they show up in the same church. And not only do they not know each other, they don't want to know each other. Amen. And then for those of us who get to know one another, some of us don't like each other to the point that we don't want to know any more about you. <laughs> Amen. You know, but but as Christians, and especially as uh, especially as Christians, I should say, when we want, we all should have a desire to be used by God, and so we would want to have the kind of spiritual gifts that will be a blessing to each other. Amen. Amen. I keep on saying there's something wrong with our uh, so-called religion when you can't get along with your brothers and sisters in Christ, especially in your own house. We're family. You know, my Allah, we are family. And, and not speaking to one another and, and uh, disagree, disagreeably with one another uh, is like being in your house and not getting along with the people that live under the same roof with you. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, you hear what I said. I didn't say, you know, we couldn't disagree, but we ought to be able to disagree without being disagreeable. And the love of Christ uh, should overwhelm us and have uh, more power than any more influence than anything else. But when we're at that point where we're disagreeable and we don't want to agree and we've got to the point where we've written each other off or what have you, that's not the love uh, that uh, Christ talks, that uh, Paul is talking about. And no matter what gift you have, uh, you make your gift null and void in a sense because you're not allowing the love to go along with that gift. It's like uh, it's like having Kool-Aid. Thank you, Jesus. Most of y'all know what Kool-Aid is, right? Now, whether you have lemonade powder, grape powder, right, uh, apple, uh, orange, pineapple, whatever, the strawberry, cherry, you know, all those packets of Kool-Aid I used to love to drink when I was a kid. The one thing, and you can use it, and, and you know, we used to get it and put it in our hand, lick it and all that kind of stuff, lick it, uh, get it from a stick. But the one common denominator that all those powders needed in order to be effective was what? Thank you. Was water. In the same way, there may be gift of faith, gift of healing, gift of teaching, gift of knowledge, the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gift of administration. And we all have these different packets. But the one common denominator that makes it most effective is love. Amen. Amen. And so when you don't have that, then you are not as flavorful. <laughs> Amen. You are not as effective as you should be. Amen. And, and, and that's the idea that Paul was getting across. And so verse 15 is really, verse 14 is really something. Um, well, I'm sorry, verse 12 is what we read. And when he says, uh, so also you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, Seek to excel in building up the church. You know, as Christians, uh, our main objectives should not be about us. It should be about everybody else. Amen. Amen. So that's where churches mess up. Can I say this? That's where churches mess up. Because whenever you can only get involved when it's something of your ministry or your group and you don't have that same enthusiasm for everybody else, you got the wrong idea. You've missed it. You've missed it. You've often heard preachers say, you know, I can tell when, uh, you've heard me say, I can tell what, even if I didn't know ahead of time what the program was going to be about, when I walked in, just by looking at who shows up, I can tell who was on program and who's going to be doing what by the folks who show up. Because when certain folks show up or are on program, if you will, on program, then certain folks show up. But if it's not their group or anybody that they like, I won't see. It. And don't, don't, you know, you say, man, that's not just our church. 
I hear this from pastors all over. <laughs> Amen. If I can just get everybody to come for every service, not, you know, just the mission when it's the mission, or just the ushers when it's just the ushers, and not just the choir when it's just the choir, but if I get everybody to come for every program to support one another, then we would be so much better and so much more effective. And so Paul says here, you know, uh, seek those gifts that will excel in building up the church uh, that may help us to edify. That's building up, to, to help, to make stronger, uh, to support and supplement. Uh, let's do those, desire those gifts that's going to help somebody else. Come on, let's relate scripture. Uh, at the end of it all, we're going to stand in front of God and God is going to ask us, what did we do for somebody else? When I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me the drink? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was in prison or when I was sick, did you come to visit me? That's all about helping somebody else. Amen? And, and, and again, that's what people miss the mark in church nowadays because we're so caught up in us that we're not concerned about our fellow man. Amen. What a poor, pitiful, pathetic pastor I would be if all I was concerned about was me. Amen. What y'all gonna do for me? Amen. What I'm gonna get out of this? If I show up, how am I gonna be blessed? And I'm not thinking about the sheepfold that God has given me responsibility for. You know, uh, God is gonna get me. Amen. amen. Got news for you. Go get some of us too. <laughs> some of you all too. Amen. <laughs> amen. Because we're not concerned about one another. Spiritual gifts are for the benefit of the church. Amen. Uh, quickly, Ephesians chapter 4. Turn there. Ephesians chapter 4. You've seen this a thousand times. Uh, and I think the, the particular verse I want is verse uh, 12. We read verse 11 all the time, but it's really verse 12 that I want to emphasize. Ephesians chapter 4. Fourth chapter of Ephesians, uh, verses, really verses 11 and 12. When you have it, say amen. amen. All right, most of you have it. It says from the King James Version, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Why did he give these? And these are gifts that the Holy Spirit gave. Why did he give these gifts? Verse 12. Can you all read that? Let's read that out loud together. For the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen. For the maturing, for the growing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, uh, and for the building up of the body of Christ. That's what all these gifts are for. And what we have, again, is not for us. The, the Holy Spirit is, a, is, he is amazing uh, because he gives us things to be a blessing, not necessarily for us, but for everybody else. Amen. So the gifts that you have is not for you, it's for everyone else. If you want to, uh, it's almost paradoxical, if you will, in his method of working with us. Because uh, Jesus tells us uh, in the Gospels, if you want to be great, you got to be least. If you want to be high, you got to make yourself low. Amen. Uh, Dr. King's, one of his great sermons uh, is the uh, Drum Major Instinct sermon, where he talks about uh, everybody can be great because according to the definition, greatness is serving. And so everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You know, the Drum Major Instinct, you know what the Drum Major is, right? The drum major is that guy or girl that's in front of the band with the baton, and he's leading that. He's the focus of attention because he's dancing and twirling, or she's dancing and twirling and doing all the dance moves. That's the drum major. Now, everybody uh, desires to be that one out in the front. But Dr. King emphasized what Jesus said. If you really want to be great, then show yourself to be least. Jesus said, I didn't come to be ministered unto. I came to minister. You know, and he showed that by washing his disciples' feet. I mean, he is the son of God. And, and I do believe Judas was still in the number. <laughs> I know Peter was. Amen. Peter was still in that number. And he watched, he got down 
on his knees and wash their feet. And Peter, you know, you got to love Peter. That's my guy. Peter said, oh, no, Lord, I can't have you washing my feet. No, 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 no. That's, you, you, I, you, you. It's as if he was saying, you're above that. And, and, and this, this is beneath you. And Jesus said, if I don't wash you, Peter, I will have no part of you. Peter got smart real quick. Well, look, not only my feet. <laughs> wash me all over. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but the point is that Jesus showed himself to be a servant. And, and so getting back to our lesson as far as spiritual gifts, what you know, whatever spiritual gift God has given to you to use, we use it not so we can brag about it. Well, I got this gift of prophecy. I'm something. Did you hear me? Woo! I was on it. No, 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 no. It's to be a blessing to somebody else. You got the gift of healing. You don't have to go around with a sandwich board. I'm a healer. I healed so-and-so. She said she had cancer. And I prayed and I prayed and look at her now. No, no, it's, it's not about you. It's about being a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. I'll throw this in for free. You can tell the attitude of some folk because uh, when they are not center stage, you don't see it. <sighs> That's the bad thing. <sighs> In other words, if they're not on program and they're not the ones doing anything, then they feel like it's not important. And so you don't you don't even see them. And even if you see them, they're not real supportive. They're just sitting there. But then when they get up, now all of a sudden, now all of us should be in the spirit. You ever see people in service? It's the middle of the service. We've been saying amen and praising God and everything. And then you call them up. Now we're going to have a solo by Kenneth Giles. And Kenneth Giles said, come on, y'all. Let's get in the spirit. We ought to be having church up in here. And I'm looking at them like, wait a minute. We've been having church. Where you been? <laughs> now all of a sudden, we're supposed to be super spiritual because you got up. That's an attitude that says, you know, I'm, I'm the stuff. Now it's really going to be on because I'm going to do my thing. Amen. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that way. And if anybody's offended, uh, it is not my intention to offend you, but that's your conviction. Or your conscience convicting you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You ever notice? Oh, and I'll throw this out too. You know, you can also tell what their attitude is because some folk only show up to do what they do and then they leave. Mmm. I like to see the reaction of some folk who watch this during the week. <laughs> amen. I'm going to get some amens, even if they don't say it on the website. Yep, pastor, you're right. Because some folk come in, and then what kills me, and this is just me again, this is just pastor, may not be everybody else, what kills me is they want to hold you hostage for a half hour or so while they're up doing what they're doing and all of that, and it seems like they just can't sit down and they won't sit down, and then when they finally sit down, they're tipping out. You done made our service a half hour longer because you couldn't sit down and then you want to leave. I'm not saying that's anybody here. Y'all can say amen. I'm just saying what I'm saying. MCs kill me with that. You got to sing after every song. You got to have a sermon in after every word of encouragement, all of that. And you just keep going on and on. And then when you're done, and you done made the service about another 40 minutes longer, and then you hold up that finger. <laughs> wish I had a BB gun. <laughs> I wish it was a light. You said I wish it was a lightning rod. <laughs> yeah, I would shoot him in the finger. You know? <laughs> but that ain't love. I'm sorry. <laughs> But my point is, and, and, and really, seriously, my point is, they give the impression. And you know, sometimes some people do have to leave and all of that. We understand that. And I understand that. But they give the impression that it was all about them and not about the glory of God and not about giving God praise. I came to show out to do my stuff. Now that I've done my thing, I'm ready to go. Y'all been blessed now. I'm ready to go. <laughs> You understand? At least do you understand what I'm saying? You got to agree. Or do you understand what I'm saying? All right. Uh, verse 15. We're back in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Uh, verse 14, actually. 
Verse 14 says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Uh, verse 15, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupied the womb of the unlearned say amen at any given at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou say? Okay, Homer Christian standard. It says like this, verse 15. Uh, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit. Or in other words, what should I do? Well, here's my answer. I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with my understanding. Otherwise, verse 16, if you praise with the spirit, how will the uninformed person say amen at your giving thanks since he does not know what you are saying? You know, so a lot of times when they go into that speaking in tongues, I'm not about to say amen. And sometimes people have seen me personally and they saw the look on my face and they thought that I had a problem with what they were saying. It's not that I necessarily have a problem. It's just that I don't know what you're saying. So I'm not going to say amen to what I understand what you're saying. In another tongue, you could be cussing me out. <laughs> if you're not in the spirit and I don't understand in my spirit that you're speaking in the spirit. So I'm not going to just say amen. I don't say amen every time for the folk I hear in English. The folk get up and say some stuff and I just look at them. Or oh, I'll say, help the Lord, or, you know, come on, praise God with something, you know, because I do believe in responding, because I believe, you know, do unto others as you have them do unto you. I don't want people being quite quiet with me, but, you know, yeah, everybody that gets up and say some stuff, I'll say it, man, too. You know, Sister Hester, I'm sorry, you had your hand up. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so Paul is saying, for the people who are hearing folk in the tongue, how are they going to say amen, and they don't understand what you're saying? And folk get up and do that, don't they? They get the shando and high sacramentals. Say amen, somebody. Why? What you say? <coughs> you could have said, oh, y'all, sinners, and on your way to hell, and you need to go to hell and deserve to go to hell. You could be saying that in time. And I'm going to say, amen. <laughs> amen. I know that's an extreme example, but I'm, you get the point. The point is, you don't know what they're saying. It's like reading a document and the lawyer says, to your point, Sister uh, Watson, let's put it on a legal basis now. It's like a, a, a lawyer giving you some doc, uh, some documents and you don't understand what's on there. And they say, go ahead and sign this. Wait a minute. I don't know what this is. I ain't going to sign this. Amen. What time is it? Oh, my God, it's 825. Let's start right here. Amen. Amen. Those of you that are linked in, I hope you've been blessed by this. Uh, let us know www.mmovc.org uh, write us, send us a note let us know, we bless God for you being with us and we also ask if it is, uh, if you're led by the spirit amen, send a financial donation, we will be blessed by what you have more than anything from what you've heard tonight, let me tell you that if you're not saved and you're not born again, you can be saved and you can be born again by believing and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you believe and accept him as your Lord and Savior. You can be saved today. I hope you will accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And we'll all be excited because the Bible says there's more rejoicing in heaven over one than the 99 that is already there. So God bless you and thank you so much for tuning in to this broadcast. Amen. Amen. Amen.